All right, welcome back to High School Economics. This is Dr. Kling. We're now on to the simple Keynesian model. So this is uh, a model that will help us determine income using some very uh, simple equations. So first we have y equals c plus i. So we're going to ignore ignore government spending and net exports in this very simple model. And so this is our income equals spending. And then I'm going to write a consumption function. C equals C naught plus C Y. Now this really tends to trip a lot of people up. I remember when I was a TA um, at Harvard one year, I was a teaching assistant, and eight students walked up to me after class, after I'd supposedly explained this, and asked, what is C naught? What C naught, what this is, is a simple uh, y equals mx plus b type of equation where consumer spending depends on income and C naught is here, it's the intercept. So this is an intercept in a simple linear equation. And this little c, that's a, that's a lowercase c. Don't ask me why I always write it with the little line, but I do. Um, and that's the slope. So this is an intercept, and this, is a, this c is a slope. And that's all that is. So C is your basic rise over run slope, this little little C. This is a big C, consumer spending. So C equals C naught plus little c times y. And these are uh, numbers. Let's let's put some numbers in there. Let's let well let's not put numbers in yet. Let me solve this. So I'm going to plug solve these, this by plugging this in, into here. So we're going to take as given I C sorry C naught and little C. So this is C naught. So the so we're going to take as given the level of investment, the intercept and the slope of this consumption function and then we're going to, we, we're left with only two things to solve for y and c and we have two equations and so we're going <coughs> to plug in one equation into the other so we're going to say y is equal to c naught plus c y that's i've plugged this into there now I'm going to bring this i back down plus i. So now I've got one equation. All these three, three things are given. <coughs> I just have to pull the y over and I'll have this all solved. So I'm going to subtract the cy. This is just algebra as you can hopefully you can tell. Now I'm going to factor out the y and that's what I get and then I'm going to move the 1 minus c over here by dividing and I'm going to write that this way 1 over 1 minus c times c naught plus i and this term here the 1 over 1 minus c is called the multiplier it's got a got kind of a historical value in Keynesian modeling. Uh, Keynes, this is called a Keynesian model. Keynes is John Maynard Keynes, who was a British economist, I think born around 1880, did most of his important writing in the uh, early part of the 20th century, culminating in about 1936. He writes the general theory of employment, interest, and money, and people have been using a lot of his macroeconomic ideas ever since. And one of the terms that we have is this multiplier, 1 over 1 minus c, 
C is the member is the slope of the consumption function. It's also the Keynesian term is marginal propensity to consume. Okay, so we have this equation, and that will tell us output. Now let's let, let's just throw in some examples. Suppose that the intercept was 1.6 trillion. And suppose that investment was 1.8 trillion. And suppose that the marginal propensity to consume was 0.6. Then our equation would be y equals 1 over 1 minus 0.6 times 1.6 plus 1.8 and that will equal this the multiplier will now be 1 over 0.4 which is 2.5 so the multiplier is 2.5 times 1.6 plus 1.8 and that'll give us 8.5 so that's our 8.5 trillion and just check let's run this into the consumption function so remember C is going to equal C naught plus CY is equal to 1.6 plus 0.6 times 8.5 and that is equal to 6.7 and 6.7 plus 1.8 is 8.5 so it is, uh, we have solved this equation correctly. So let's talk a little bit more about this consumption function and what these things are. C naught we can think of as the amount people would spend. It's sort of like a subsistence consumption. That might not be a good term. Or what people would spend regardless of their income. It may seem strange that people could spend if they had zero income. But in some sense, that's what that if you extrapolated down to zero income that's what they would spend so they uh, they just need to spend even if they don't have income somehow they borrow I don't know quite how that would happen uh, we don't have to worry about spending in the neighborhood of zero income because we don't observe it but in some sense that's what that intercept represents and then this is spending out of additional income. So when we say it's 0.6 in this assumption, that's saying that uh, for every additional $100 you earn, you're going to spend 60 and save 40. That's what that, uh, that's what that would say there. And I want to finish off this simple Keynesian model by showing you a graphical version of it. So we're going to put income on this axis, spending on this axis, and the equation, um, well the, the the notion that income equals spending is represented by a 45 degree line. So this line is a 45 degree line, that is income equals spending. And then the consumption function function plus investment is our other line. And we'll draw that here. So that's uh, C 
not plus c y plus i. So what that says is that as income goes up, spending goes up. Now the intercept is here at the, before we used 1.6 and we had a slope of 0.6. So here the slope is 1. With a 45 degree line the slope is 1. So this one slope is 1. This one the slope is 0.6. And this intersection will be uh, the eight, will be at 8.5 on both things. So that that's kind of a graphical representation that we'll sometimes see. I actually don't use the graphical representation very much, but you should take a look at it, look at it in a textbook. Uh, it sometimes can come up on an AP. And that's it on the simplest model. Next time we'll extend it to include more complications, including government spending and what government might do to change incomes.